My name is Asia Sampson, and today on Baptism Overland, we're going to attempt to pressurize the scepter water can, or manage to blow it up. I try to consider myself to be one of those get it as you need it kind of people. Truth of the matter is there's just so much gear and so much stuff that you can get when you decide to go overlanding, off-roading, camping. There's a lot of stuff and we can get bogged down buying all the stuff and then finding out we don't even need half of it. And I've had situations like that where I've bought things and realized I never even got a chance to use it. Like why do I have a hori hori knife? That being said, on the last camping trip we went to, and as with any camping or overlanding trip that you do, water is obviously essential. Now when it comes to drinking water, we pretty much have that squared away. Uh, each member of my family has humongous water bottles, and then we also have a Stanley water jug that holds about three gallons. So drinking wise, we are good. What we didn't have though was a way to wash dishes. The campsite we went to did have water. It was a water and electrical site. The problem was the faucet was pretty far away from the campsite. Not too far, but we just didn't want to have to bring our dishes over there every time we needed to wash something. And we didn't necessarily have a host that we could just bring over to where our kitchen area was. So after that trip, I realized I wanted three water systems in my overlanding camping gear. The first system would be drinking water. And like I said, we already have that pretty much squared away. I'm not talking about survival water here right? Like that is a whole different beast that I will cross when we get to that point. But I'm not concerned right now of how I could turn pond water into drinking water. Like we will get to that. But right now we're just pretty much weekend warrior camping overlanding people that we have drinking water that we bring with us. So that's good to go. Our second system would be a portable water system that is pressurized. The reason why I want to have that is so that we can kind of bring it over to the kitchen or wherever we need and we have pressurized water when we need it. Especially if let's say you are wanting to use the bathroom, you can carry this with you and spray yourself if you needed to wash up after. Something that's portable that's not in the Jeep itself. And the third system will be a bigger water tank that will actually stay in the Jeep. And I want that just so that we can shower or whenever we get back from the beach, I don't like my son or my wife or myself dragging sand into the vehicle. So having some sort of showering system that's already built into the rig itself, we can just wash off before we jump inside. So those are the three systems. And the third system I will eventually build as soon as Front Runner brings their tanks back in stock because those are the ones I want something that goes inside the vehicle and not on the roof rack because that's heavy so I want like a footwell one or something that's already in the cargo area but they're just not in stock right now so until I get that I'm going to worry about this system for now which is the pressurized water can and that's what we're going to attempt to do today so we will see how this works I have never done anything like this but I have seen some people do it so we're going to try to attempt to do it ourselves so let's go over what you need. First, you're gonna need your scepter water tank. Next, you're gonna need a spigot. This is the one I got off of Amazon. I like it because it's just really simple. It's not like sticking out a lot and it has a really nice lever at the top. So that's pretty cool. It makes it just easy to turn the water on and off without it looking like this humongous thing that you gotta turn. So I like this one and I'll put all the links below of what I bought. Next, you're gonna need a hose. And this is basically the hose that will go inside the scepter water tank. It will fit on one end of the spigot like this. And that way you can reach the water that's at the bottom of the tank. Now, I would recommend you go to your hardware store and buy this and not buy it online, which is why I won't put a link to this, only because you kind of want to take your spigot to the hardware store and make sure it just fits. Like, you don't want to be buying this online and then realize it doesn't fit. Plus, at the hardware store, you can actually get the size that you need. You just have to measure the length of your scepter water tank and then you'll know and have them cut it to size. And then that's all. You don't have to worry about cutting it yourself. So go to the hardware store for this. Next, you're going to need a clamp. And these are just your generic clamps. You can also get at the hardware store. I would buy it with the hose. Then you'll know it fits. Basically, this is what clamps this thing onto this thing. So that's the system right there that will be going into the scepter water tank. And then don't forget, you'll need Teflon tape. This is Teflon tape that you can use to make sure that water and air does not leak out 
of your system. And finally, to put air into your tank, you're going to need a valve. And this is a Schrader valve. Uh, basically, they use it for tires. Uh, we will screw this also onto the top of the scepter water tank. And this is how we get air into the tank. And these I got on Amazon, super cheap. You get like four of them in the pack. So I will link that below. And then finally, to get water where you want it, this is the system that will be outside of it. Spot a regular sprayer. I'll put the link below for where I got mine, but I mean, you can get these anywhere. You can just go to the hardware store for this too. And obviously you will need your hose. This is the hose that I got. I like this one only because it looks really industrial. I like that it's metal. You can get the rubberized hoses if you'd like, and you can get it in any length that you want. But I think this is like a perfect enough length because the water tank will be sitting next to you. And then this will be just enough to wash your dishes or wash whatever it is that you want. I'll link this below, but I like this. So this is what I'm gonna go with. So here's my plan. My plan is to build this system off of just the cap. And the reason I say that is because just in case I mess up or I didn't do this properly or I just don't like how this works, then all I need to do is go buy another cap and not have ruined this thing. Not that these are expensive, but Keep this in good condition and then mess with the cap all you want. And then later on, if you decide you don't want to use this system anymore, then you just get rid of the cap part, buy a new one, and you're good to go. And this has remained untouched. So we're going to build off of this. And the plan is we're going to remove this first because we don't need this anymore. So that's gone. Here, I'm going to basically cut this because notice the height on here and the height of this thing. This is going to be gone too because we're not going to need this either. This basically will screw into here. But if you notice, the width of this is already eating up the whole thing. I don't know if you can see that, but... If I do that, I won't have any room to clamp this hose onto. So if I just break this all the way down to the very bottom, I can then put this all the way in as much as I can and still have room inside for me to clamp this hose onto. So basically this will clamp onto here. It'll look like this. And then the hose will be inside like this. This will go inside the scepter water tank. And then there you have your water outlet. Putting air in, however, I've seen some people use this and put their, their valve here. I don't want to do that. I'm actually going to do a separate hole for this. The valve will basically go on to here and that's how we fill it up with air. I want to do it this way because I want to preserve this. Why? Because if you open this, it's really sealed tight too. When you open this, this is supposed to help water pour out. But I looked at this and I said, oh, this is a good way for me to release the pressure that's in here. So when we have this whole thing pressurized, if we don't want it pressurized anymore, then you just open this valve, the air will escape and that will depressurize the can. So I want to leave this intact. So that's what I'm going to do. So this will be our pressure release valve. This will be our water outlet. And then this will be the air pressure valve. So let's work on getting this on first because that's going to be the hardest and then we will work on getting this on and then we should be done. All right, I got my safety glasses on, got my lid, and then I got my rotary tool with a plastic cutting wheel. So I'm going to cut just to like right there because I do want to leave enough space um, still for the faucet spigot to screw onto. So let's cut it. All right, now comes the part that I've been dreading, which is fitting this through here, having enough room for this, and then clamping it on with this. So let's go ahead and loosen this up so I'll have room. Stick this on. Okay. So far, so good. So we're going to put plumber's tape on here, go clockwise so that as you turn it, you don't take it off while you're turning. I learned that a long time ago. 
We just have to muscle this in there because what you're essentially doing is using the metal of this to create the grooves in here. I'm gonna widen this hole just a tad just to get something started. There you go. There's that. It's snug up in there. And then this is what's coming out on the other end. And the clamp is in and it's tight. Now we just need to drill a hole for the air intake and we should be good. Let's start off with a small pilot hole first. Make sure that where I'm drilling will clear any of the fittings inside and I just want to make sure that this isn't going anywhere. So I'm going to start off small and see if this fits first because you don't want to go too big and then you can't screw it in and now you'll have leaks. So let's start off with something small as close to that valve as you can. See if it fits and then if it doesn't then go just a little bit bigger. actually fits pretty good yeah I think we got a winner first time look at that let's go ahead and put this on All right guys, I got everything set up. I put the hose onto the spigot using also plumber's tape and also plumber's tape on the other end where the sprayer is. I also have my compressor hooked up to the valve now and I'm gonna go ahead and start this but I'm gonna step back because if it blows up, who knows what's gonna happen. Let's go ahead and set it up to 15 PSI for now just so we can make sure we're safe. That should be enough. Ooh, I'm already getting some bloating at like seven. So let's stop there and let's take a look. Bam! All right, so my son is going to showcase what I just made. Okay, hold it up. Look what happens. Squeeze it. Squeeze it? Yes. Not, not at the camera. There, out here. Go. Whoa! That's pretty cool. All right, guys, that's it. That's the build, and it was actually super simple. This was the first time I think I've done a build where I didn't run into any issues. Everything fit just fine. It's not leaking pressurized just fine. I had it to 7 PSI, but I think I can probably push it up higher. It's just I started to see the can bulge a little bit and it kind of scared me. But since it was only a test run, it's not a big deal. Next time I'll try to push it to 10 and then maybe 15 and see how that goes. I know I probably won't push it past 15 or 20 because you shouldn't. It'll just destroy this thing. But I think at 15 PSI, it'll just shoot out even more and I will try that when we get out there. In the meantime, my son enjoyed it, right? Right. Yeah? You were shooting it? Yeah. Yeah? You're going to shoot daddy with it? Yes. <laughs> no. Well, yes. that's it. Make sure to, f don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and um, yeah, follow us on our Instagram account at Baptism <laughs> Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you mm -hmm. next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Why is that silly? Because I always say that when I make YouTube channels. <laughs> GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, stop recording. Dang it!